The Ship of Bones. In the days when sailing ships crossed the oceans, blown by the winds, there was one ship that all sailors dreaded to see. It was called the Ship of Bones. Its sails were deathly white, and its figurehead was a skull, and all along its length were carved the names of drowned sailors, and they say that the hull was made from their bones. This is the story of, o of the only man who went aboard the Ship of Bones and lived to tell the tale. His name was Stoker, Bill Stoker, and he sailed on the ship Mayfly that left Portsmouth in England on the 1st of June, 1784. They hadn't been gone more than a week when they were caught in a storm, in a terrible storm. The waves towered up six times as high as the mainmast, and the little ship was tossed about the ocean like a bit of cork in the foam. One moment it was rising up the head of a mighty wave, and the next minute it was dashed down into the trough, and the waters blotted out the sun, and it all went still until another wave crashed down on her bows. Well, the storm raged on for four days and four nights, and on the fourth night the sailors had given themselves up as good as dead. Their sails were in shreds, the rudder was broken, and half the crew were lying sick in their hammocks or being tossed across the cabin by the force of the sea. Old Bill Stoker was lying in his bunk, thinking this would be his last night on this earth, when he heard a cry from up on the deck, and this sailor comes running down to the cabin as white as a sheet. It's the ship of bones, he cries. We've had it now for sure, mates. Now, old Bill Stoker was not one to take things lying down. I don't believe in no ship of bones, he says, and leaps out of his bunk and climbs up on the deck. It was dreadful night. The rain lashed across his face, and the wind was blowing up the sea like so many mountains. Bill Stoker peers into the storm, and sure enough, across the tops of the raging waters, he can just make out the whitest ship you ever saw. Its sails were almost glowing white in the darkness. Well, shouts Bill Stoker, if that's the ship of bones, I'll eat my hat. Just then, a mighty wave smashes across the deck, and before he knows what's hit him, Bill Stoker finds himself lifted high up in the air on top of the wave. He looks down, and there, a hundred feet below, is his own ship. Then, suddenly, he's thrown through the air by the force of the wave, and he lands slap in the middle of another, and he goes right under. Well, just as he's beginning to gasp for breath, he finds himself finds himself shooting out and up into the air again on another monstrous wave. And this time he looks down and just catches sight of the white ship below him when he finds himself hurtling downwards again. Then everything goes deathly quiet and still. Well, he opens his eyes and looks around. Sure enough, He's lying right there on the deck of the Ship of Bones. He can see the black night and the storm raging all about. But the ship itself is quite still, scarcely moving, like as if it were becalmed, and there's not a sound. Bill Stoker puts his hand out and feels the deck. It's smooth like ivory, and even though the rain and the waves are lashing the ship, the deck itself is quite, quite dry. Well, Bill looks around and sees that he's all alone, except for an old sailor who's winding in the anchor. So he gets to his feet and calls out, Ahoy there! But the old sailor doesn't turn around. He just keeps on a winding in that anchor. So Bill Stoker walks across the deck and says, Ahoy there, matey! What's to do? The old sailor turns around, and do you know? He hasn't got a face. Leastwise, 
not what you'd call a face, more of a skull, and his hands are skeleton hands, and his jaws open, and the cracked voice says, Welcome to the ship of bones, Bill! And he puts out a bony hand to take hold of Bill Stoker. But old Bill Stoker, he backs away. Then he turns on his heel, on his heels, and runs as hard as he can, and ducks below decks. But he can hear the skeleton coming after him, so he shuts the hatch and skids down those steps as fast as he can. Inside the ship, there's a curious smell like you get around tombstones. Bill Stoker grabs the rail as he goes down, and he notices that everything's made out of bones, white and yellow, old and new. But he can still hear the skeleton footsteps coming after, after him, so he goes right on down the hold. And there's the boat. There's the ship. It's so dark, he can't see for a bit. Then suddenly he hears the shout. Why, here's Bill Stoker. Hello there, Bill. Welcome to the Ship of Bones. Bill's eyes are used to the dark by now, and he can just see some shapes rising up off their beds and coming towards him. Well, he doesn't stop to see who they are. He doubles back on himself and runs back up the steps. And there's the skeleton sailor. Standing at the top, grinning down at him. Well, old Bill Stoker wasn't a man to be scared easily. So he runs up the steps, gets out his cutlass, and strikes at the creature. But the skeleton sailor hops out of the way and grabs Bill's shirt as he runs past. But it's an old shirt. And it rips apart before the thing can get its bony fingers over Bill's throat. In a thrice! Bill's up on the deck again, sprinting across to the bridge house. Once inside, he locks the door, but he can hear the bony steps coming nearer and nearer. Then he sees that horrible, grinning skull's face, leering in at the window. Bill wasn't the man to give up, like, so he thinks to himself, they're just a lot of old bones, all of them. They must be scared of something. Then he gets an idea. I know what will see old bones off, he cries, and he drops down on all fours and starts barking like a dog. Well, the skull's face sort of frowns. Old Bill flings the door open and leaps out, barking like mad. And do you know, that horrible creature just turns and runs. Whereupon, old Bill takes his chance and leaps over the side immediately. He feels the waves picking him up and flinging him across the water again. Well, I don't know what happened next, and I don't think old Bill knew, but he finally found himself back on his own boat, with his shipmates all standing around him and pointing. And Bill looked out into the night, and he saw that ship of bones going off as fast as it could to wherever it came from. Not long after that, the storm died down and they came out into calmer waters. And old Bill Stoker told his story to his shipmates and they all listened with bated breath. But, do you know, not one of them believed it. But that didn't worry old Bill Stoker. And that evening... He sat right down, and guess what he did? He ate his hat. <laughs>